Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by the shop for another Screwy Tuesday. Uh, I guess I should have a little discussion about the rant, the rant and the rant review. Um, <laughs> I think Colin Chippett had it uh, best and he's a long way away, he's up in Canada. But uh, his comment was, uh, Chuck, I thought just you and Jose were having some fun, didn't take it too seriously. And he's right, I, I was having fun. But I want to say to everybody that commented on both videos, I appreciate uh, you, you, your, your comments. I read them all, and um, I appreciate all of the uh, nice comments I got about my channel. A lot of people chimed in, thought I was upset or something. I'm not, and uh, I'm still here uh, every Tuesday. So let's, uh, let's start off right here. Um, how, he, uh, how he got a, a magazine shoot. Uh, for uh, hot dogs. So let's uh, click over and see the uh, magazine shoot. I've seen your picture. Aiming lots of fun. This is your big debut. It's like a dream come true. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. As you know, that was a joke. So this video is going to be about uh, starting the build of my Arbor Press stand. And along in this uh, video, um, I've got some tool purchases that I wanted to share, and I think uh, you're going to enjoy uh, one of them. I think one of them is a kind of a special Harbor Freight item that uh, it's worth tuning in. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, like always, I'll see you next Screwy Tuesday. thought I'd share a couple new items to the shop. Um, ordered these from uh, Jody at Welding Tips and Tricks. Got a small TIG finger. I got the extra large. And then I bought one of these uh, tab, uh, magnetic tab uh, units that he's been showing. Uh, picked those up and then I was happened to be at my welding store today and picked up another set of safety glasses. And these are got readers in it, uh, full readers, no, uh, no uh, bifocal. Uh, so those will come in handy. Uh, I'm going to move the camera over and we're going to pick up on a Craigslist purchase that I did today. Well, here's the uh, Craigslist purchase of the day. Uh, yeah, you can see what I, what I originally went for was this table here. It's a cast iron table and it's uh, 27 by 30, 27 by 30, three quarters of an inch thick. And it has a uh, three and a half inch uh, apron around the uh, perimeter of it. Uh, I'll turn it over and you'll see the other side if I can lift it. Um, it came on legs, so the, uh, those are angle iron legs. So just, just the angle iron legs, the cost in scrap is what I would have paid for if I just went to buy these. Uh, I paid 40 bucks for the table and the legs. Super buy. So I was there, uh, ended up picking up some C-clamps. These are Wilton uh, C-clamps. Um, don't know if I really need them, but I couldn't pass them up. Uh, what do they open up? Maybe, uh, maybe eight inches they open up. Um, and they have a throat of, uh, four and a half inches. Fifteen bucks for the two of them. Paid, uh, fifteen dollars for the four, uh, pony clamps. And, uh, thirty-five bucks for a laminate trim router, a porter cable trim router. Pretty super deal. I was really uh, kind of stoked in the table. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's awesome. Let me see if I can get it turned over and we'll take a peek. Uh, here's a shot of the uh, actual surface of that cast iron piece, and it's it's in great shape. It's going to make uh, something out of it. Got to find a place in this uh, shop to keep it, or it'll go on the market as a welding table. Well, here's another new tool to the shop. I've really been wanting one of these for quite some time. It's a uh, extended point live center. And uh, the, um, the fact of trying to reach in sometimes on the end of a shaft and the tooling's too big, I wanted one of these smaller guys. So this arrived today, picked it up off of uh, eBay. Um, it was uh, Z Tool, I think was the Z Live is the uh, manufacturer. And uh, it's a little over 80 bucks, but 
really happy to add it to the shop. And got one other little add here. Uh, this guy. Um, it uh, picks up my iPhone and puts it to uh, remote speakers in the shop. Uh, I used to listen to it on my music on my computer and uh, the computer's gone uh, since I use my iPhone all the time. So this uh, works out well. Got a speaker on the wall. You maybe can hear it in the background. Uh, and uh, I have my main shop has its own stereo and speakers out there, but uh, I'm jacked about having this back in here. So on the cold evenings, I close the door so I can't hear anything out in the main shop. Anyway, thought I'd share this with you. Here's another new tool for my shop. Um, you're going to see my buddy's shop later in this video, and uh, he turned me on to it. Uh, he rebuilds uh, Bridgeport Mills and uh, does all the, all the paint on them and everything. Uh, and this is the cool little tool. <laughs> A two inch DA sander. How about that? And yes, it's from our friends at Harbor Freight. Um, it's, I saw it and I says, I got to run out and buy one of these. Uh, it's really good for reaching into little areas where you can't get in. Um, they, it uses a hook and loop for the uh, pads, but uh, you don't want to uh, buy the pads from them. That's this is the other trick he showed me. Uh, these for a package of six is like four bucks. Um, the, the, the DA itself uh, is uh, $28. And the, the trick is you buy seven inch discs and make a little die and punch them out. And this... Uh, this uh, disc, this uh, package right here from them, was uh, four bucks. So four bucks, you get six per pad, and they're six per these. So six, six times three, eighteen for uh, four bucks. Anyway, I'm pumped. Uh, this is going to be a nice little handy tool, and. Uh, that's the 150 grid I put on there. So, uh, they also make this in uh, Ingersoll Rand, uh, about 120 bucks. but uh, I think I'll burn up one of these first. Pretty cool tool. This is a continuation of the uh, build for the Arbor, uh, Arbor Press, the uh, stand for it. And uh, I just uh, wanted to mention it's bolted to the wall, but I'm not using it. I just... I just uh, screwed it to the wall. It's just there to get the Arbor Press out of my way for right now uh, and for something for me to look at. Now, um, I, I talked to uh, Tom Lipton and asked him for a little assistance, and he gave me a lead uh, over, uh, oh, about an hour and a half, uh, hour and a half away from me. And uh, I wrote the guy and sent him a photo of my wood stand and said, uh, I want to build this and give me some price on some uh, half inch plate. And I'd already priced it uh, here locally and it was quite expensive. And uh, he gave me pricing and the pricing was far below uh, anybody here local. And so I said, oh, that's great. And uh, somehow we got talking and he says, well, just provide the CAD drawings. Uh, and I said, well, is that going to cost more if you cut it per my design? He goes, no, it's included in the price I gave you. So I had to take my mock-ups, which you saw I did freehand and kind of with a compass, and uh, create CAD drawings. Uh, I'm an amateur at CAD, and uh, so it was fun trying to figure it out, what I had actually drawn up and then converted to uh, CAD. And uh, so... Um, see if this shows up. So there's one of the CAD drawings and I did a modification to the base plate from what you see there. You can see it now has ears on either side. The uh, Atlas I think might have came both ways but I did see one with the little ears on it and I decided to add the ears uh, on the back side of it. So did that, did this one and uh, did one for the for the uh, top plate and then also drew up the uh, front and back plates. Uh, the radiuses and everything. 
Um, so let me, uh, the materials arrived and uh, I'm really jacked about it and let me uh, move the camera. Well, there's the material and you can see I just have it on a hand truck right there. Uh, the, the, the nice thing about the uh, fellow that uh, did this uh, burn for me, uh, these were flame cut, uh, was they're, uh, like I said, they're an hour and a half, two hours away. Um, it would have been a $75 delivery charge to my house. And I asked if he would deliver basically halfway a city of Livermore. And he says, yeah, that'd be no charge, just has to go to a business. Well, the cool thing is uh, either in the beginning of this video or in somewhere in this video, you're going to see, uh, you've seen or you're going to see an Arbor Press and a Hydraulic Press. Well, that's in a friend's shop in, in uh, Livermore. He rebuilds Bridgeport's. Just really enjoy the fella. And actually, that's who I bought my closing from. And uh, we've become friends. So I had it delivered there. It was offloaded on a pallet. And then we broke the pallet down and I brought it home in my Suburban and then threw it on the uh, hand truck here to just get it in the shop and move it Over around. in a friend's shop. And I thought I would show you a couple of Arbor Press setups. So here's an Arbor Press. As you can see, it's not a uh, little guy. 24 inches. Uh, in height that you can put in there in a nine inch uh, depth on the throat. I'm going to take you handheld um, So hang on But I thought you would enjoy seeing it It's a heck of a nice unit Ratchet on the side there And there's the uh, manufacturer Awesome unit. And the top of the handle is, it's up there. Get some leverage on that one. So we're gonna stay handheld here, which uh, hold as steady as I can. But here's a uh, hydraulic press, which uh, is uh, a very nice setup. And it was uh, built by the fella. He built it himself. and. One of the cool items on this hydraulic press, of the many, um, is you can see it has an arbor press on the side of the machine. So that the arbor press table has the ability to move all the way to the floor, all the way to the floor just like a press table. So it's an extension off of the press table. And it's got a ratchet head on it. The, uh, and then the table itself, is run uh, electrically with uh, ball screws that raise and lower the table. Twin ball screws, one on each side. So the table actuates, no, no fighting the table. And then, yeah, the motor, oops, I didn't mean to move that quick. There's the motor for it. And uh, how many ton is it? 20. Yeah, 20 ton press. Electric hydraulic. Electric hydraulic press. Gonna be mine someday. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful build. Uh, so I thought you guys would enjoy seeing that. And of course, lots and lots of uh, bushing uh, adapters. One of the first things I'm going to have to do is, is go ahead and uh, drill the holes. Um, I asked them to drill the holes. And uh, interesting enough that uh, this plate, this plate supplied and burned and half inch plate was $39. If I wanted them to drill the holes in the plate, it was 100 and, uh, 100 and, 100 and, uh, 140, $150, something like that. It, they're not set up to do holes, uh, you know, or the labor to move it and use a drill press and everything. So I said, forget the holes, I can put holes in it. Uh, super, they did a super job and uh, really excited. So we'll start breaking it down and uh, move on here. Well, first thing I need to do is uh, just just using my drawing, I did the layout for the four holes. So got those laid out, and uh, I'll end up uh, drilling those. So take it over to the drill press, get it done. Oh boy, it didn't take me very long to get old Mr. Bozo to visit me. First thing I do 
lay out all the holes, got them perfect, got them tits, and opted not to drill pilot holes. Went in with the half inch drill bit and it must have walked on me. I didn't see it. So the hole is not online. I'm not happy to start a project like that. Got to fix it. I got my eraser out and got rid of that bozo hole. So you guys don't tell anybody and I won't tell anybody. It wasn't off by much. It's just a floor mount, but man, it was going to pester the living hell out of me. Okay, well, fix that. And that actually was uh, good practice, learning how to fix a mistake. Um, and we will uh, go on layout again and get some holes punched. Okay, last hole. Yeah, I hope they're all in the right place. Now just to give the holes a quick chamfer, a little speed handle, works out well. Good little tool. Make yourself one.